Hey, but that quilted sweater though. How's it going everybody YouTube? It's your boy Ken Andrew Daly and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a short sleeve quilted sweater with side zippers. If you guys aren't feeling the 3 4th length of a sleeve, I'm going to also show you guys how to make a regular sleeve length on a sweater. If you guys are interested in seeing the full look of the sweater, be sure to skip to the end of the video. I'll try to put an annotation here. But putting all that aside, let's get straight into the tutorial. Here's an overview of everything you're going to need. Starting off with the tools. You're going to need something you can cut with, a bunch of pins, a measuring tape, and a ruler. Moving on to the materials. You're going to need two zippers of any length. You can choose whatever length you would want. A yard of rib knit material, about two yards of quilted fabric, and a sweater to use as a template. When picking a sweater to use, you want to pick one based on your fit preference. If you want a slim fit, make sure to use a sweater that is a size up from your normal size. If you want a looser fit, make sure to get a sweater that is about two sizes up. Starting off, we are going to cut out the main body pieces. Grab your sweater and turn it inside out, but leave the sleeves inward. Get some pins and pin the sleeves shut. You should end up with something that looks a bit like a sleeveless vest. Put the sweater aside for now and grab the quilted fabric. Lay it down and double up on it by folding it over. Make sure to fold it over enough so there's enough room to cut out the body pieces. Grab your sleeveless sweater template, place it over the quilted fabric, and pin it into place. Then proceed to make a 1 inch outline around the sweater with pins. Here is a bottom view of how the pinning should look, and here is the top view. Next you want to make a marking on where the neckline is. Use two pins to mark both ends. We are going to do another marking and this time it's for the sleeves. Use one pin to mark the bottom of the sleeve. Repeat this for the other side. Once you're done marking all the areas and outlining the body pieces, you can then remove the sweater. Here's how the outline should look. Now we can cut along the outline. Grab your cutting tool and proceed to carefully cut around the outline. Here's what it should look like when you're done. Since my sweater didn't have any armhole curves, I had to make my own. Now if your sweater already has armhole curves, you can skip this part. Using the pins that we marked earlier, cut a curve from the top part of the body piece to that pin. You can use the curve piece we just cut for the other side so they can be even. Here's what it should look like. Next we're going to cut out the neckline. Grab your sweater and turn it right side up. At the neckline, you want to measure the gap between the back part to the front part. With your measuring tape, start and end below the ribbed material. Remember the measurement. Go back to the body pieces and start removing all the pins. Now you want to decide which piece is the front piece and which piece is the back piece. It really doesn't matter which one you pick, so just pick one. Once you decided, put the back piece aside and get the front piece. With your measuring tape and a pin, mark the length. Shortly after, start cutting out a half circle. Use the pin as a reference. Now you should be able to differentiate between the front piece and the back piece. Next we're going to sew the shoulder seam of the body piece. Start with laying the back piece faced up and lay the front piece face down over it. Then you want to start pinning along the shoulder area. Here's how the pinning should look. Afterwards, go to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch along the pins. Next we're going to do some alterations. Now you want to try on the body piece. Slip it on and see if you need to make any alterations. As you can see, the shoulder part is a bit too long on me. Looking at the sides, it seems like it's a bit too long as well. So I decided to cut off about an inch from the shoulder area to make it fit better. For the sides, I decided to cut off two inches because it was just too baggy. When you're doing your own alterations, remember to leave a seam allowance Try it out before and after you make an alteration and make sure not to cut off too much or else it won't fit. 
Next we're going to add ribbed knit to the bottom of the body piece. Get your body piece and turn it right side up. Then you want to go towards the bottom of the piece. You want to measure the length of the bottom with a ruler. Take that measurement and minus one inch. That is going to be the measurement of the ribbed knit. Get the ribbed knit material that you want to use. Grab your ruler and measure out the length. Make a straight cut along the end. Take one of the ends and fold it downwards about two to three inches. Then you can cut it out. Repeat this one more time for the other body piece. Go back to the bottom of the body piece and get the ribbed knit. Have it lined up with the bottom and proceed to pin it on. While you are pinning, make sure to stretch it as you go so you can reach the other end. Here's what it should look like when you're done. Take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch along the pins. When you're done sewing on the ribbed knit, you can flip it downwards. Next we're going to hem the sides of the body piece. All you need to do is double fold the sides and pin them into place. Take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch to lock in the hem. Now we're going to apply the zippers. Turn the body piece right side up and go to one of the sides. When applying a zipper, make sure to hem the extra fabric on the bottom of the zipper before pinning. Once you've done that, you can proceed to start pinning the zipper onto the body piece. When you reach the end of the zipper, you want to also hem the extra fabric at the top. Once you're done with one, you can repeat this for the other side. Here's how the pinning should look. Now you want to take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pinned area. Next we're going to sew along the sides of the body piece. Turn the body piece inside out and proceed to start pinning the front and back body pieces together. Here's a look of how the pinning should be. Take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch starting from the armhole down to the start of the zipper. Start and end with a back stitch. Next we're going to make the sleeves. First thing to do is measure our arm length. Grab your measuring tape and measure from your armpit to your wrist. Now if you want a 3 fourths sleeve like me, you want to take your total measurement and minus 2 to 4 inches. If you want to keep a regular sleeve length, just keep the measurements you got. Another measurement we are going to need is the measurement of the wrist. Take your measuring tape and measure around your wrist. With your total measurement, you want to divide that in half. That will be your final measurement of your wrist. Now you want to grab the fabric you want to use for the sleeves. Double up on the fabric by folding it over. Make sure it's folded over enough to cut out a sleeve. Take the body piece and place it over the area in which we doubled up on. We are going to use the armhole on the body piece to make an accurate curve for the sleeve. Grab some pins and start outlining the armhole. Make sure to add a 1 inch seam allowance at the bottom. Next we're going to measure out the length of the sleeve. With the sleeve measurement we got earlier, use a ruler to measure out the length and mark it with a pin. Then you want to use the measurement of your wrist to mark the end of the sleeve. Finally, at the bottom of both sides, you want to connect the two bottom pins by using a ruler and making a line with pins. Here's how it should look. Proceed to cut along the pinned outline of the sleeve. Then use the first sleeve as a template to cut out the second sleeve. You should end up with two identical sleeves. Next we're going to add the sleeve cuffs. Using the wrist end of the sleeve, measure out the length. Take that length and minus one inch from it. Then multiply it by two. Go and get your ribbed knit fabric and double up on it by folding it over. Now you want to grab your measuring tape and measure out the wrist measurement. Then you can go ahead and cut out the length. Repeat this one more time for the other cuff. Go back to your sleeve and open it up on the right side of the fabric. Take the open end of the cuff and align it with the bottom of the sleeve. Similar to the body piece cuff, you want to stretch the rib knit as you pin it along the area. Here's a finished look at the pinning. Take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch along the pinned area. Afterwards, you can flip the cuffs downward. Now we're going to close up the sleeves. 
Turn the sleeves onto the wrong side of the fabric, fold it over so the ends meet, and pin it into place. Here's how the pinning should look. Take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch along the pinned area. Remember to start and end with a back stitch. When you finish, turn the sleeves right side up. Now we're going to attach the sleeves onto the sweater. With the sweater inside out and the sleeves right side up, insert the sleeves so the seam of the sleeve matches up with the seam of the body piece. Then you can proceed to pin around the armhole. Repeat this step for the other sleeve. Here's a view of how the pinning should look. Take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch around the armhole. Once you stitch both sleeves, turn the sweater right side up. The last thing we're going to do is add a collar. Get your measuring tape and measure around the collar area. Take the measurement and minus 2 inches from it. Go and get the ribbed knit fabric you want to use, measure out the length you got earlier, and cut off any excess material. Then you can double up on the fabric by folding it over. Return back to your sweater and go onto the back side of the collar. With the open side of the collar piece, start pinning at the midpoint of the collar and work your way around. As you work your way around, make sure to evenly stretch the collar piece so the ends overlap. Once you reach the end, take both ends of the collar and face them against each other. Use a pin to keep them together. Now you need to make two pin markings to indicate where to start and end. Position them about 1 inch away from the middle pin. Here's how it should look like. Take it to your sewing machine and start at the first pin marking. Do a zigzag stitch around the collar. Make sure to end at the other pin marking with a back stitch. Now you want to sew the two ends together. Position it into the sewing machine at a vertical angle and do a zigzag stitch to sew the two ends together. After that, you can then finish zigzag stitching around the collar. Once you're done, you can try on your new quilted sweater. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. This is Ken Andrew Daily, and remember to keep it daily. Peace!